hello there and welcome back to the new video today we'll be looking into positional encodings what they are where do we usually use them and why do we really need positional encodings but for now we'll not discuss how or what are the different methods for defining these positional encodings so yeah let's start with the video okay so let's start by understanding what will happen if we don't have positional encodings so for that matter let's take an example of a BERT model wherein all of we know right i mean it takes word by word as an input and on the output end it tries to produce the representation for each of these words that's why it's an encoder style model so now if we don't have positional encodings and as we all know right the transformers architecture process all these tokens in parallel right it's not something similar to what we used to have which was in lstms wherein if you have let's say three lstm blocks that make up our network then the first word goes in the first one once you process and get the hidden representation then it gets combined with w2 you have another hidden representation let's call it h2 which gets combined with w3 and let's say this is the h3 which is the final hidden representation that we are interested in so here you implicitly have the notion of time right because you are processing things in sequence because you cannot have h2 till you have h1 right so things have to be progressed step by step which adds in a notion of time implicitly but that's not the case with transformers right because all the words that you see which is w1 w2 w3 and w4 all of them are processed in parallel and that's one of the reasons to why the transformers are much faster than propagating input via lstms okay so one second so which means there has to be an identifier that you add to each word so that the model knows relative positions of the word to better understand the semantics and syntactic of the input document. But if this was not there, then the W3 representation that you would get would be same for regardless of if you permute these words, right? So if you have W3, W2, W4, W1 or you have W1, W4, W3 and W2, for all these cases and similar the representation for any word would be similar because at the end the representation is what i mean it's calculated by self attention so if this would be treated as let's say query this gets multiplied with key which is let's say one of the representation for t minus one -th word you pass it via softmax get the attention score then multiply it again with the value vector of t minus one -th step and that's the representation that w4 is trying to put on to w3 and similarly you calculate for every word and do it for multiple heads then that would make up the entire representation for w3 so imagine right if there's no concept of position this could be very well be w2 and since at the end you'll be summing up or averaging each of these representations so you'll be coming on to a same value for every word so yeah that's the requirement for having positional encodings so that the representation that you learn are really meaningful in terms of how the sentence has been constructed so yeah, that kind of answers all the wh questions that i had put down in the starting right where do you need it you need it in transformers model why do you need it because tokens are processed in parallel so any permutation of your input sequence would result in similar representation for every word so which is what you don't want you want the model to learn the semantics and syntactic oriented embeddings to better understand our input sequence and what are these these are nothing but a vector or a identifier that you add against each of the word before passing it to the transformers model so now the only question left is how do you generate these positional encodings so again it's an active area of research and people are coming up with all interesting ways of representing these encodings with the classic one being the combination of sine and cosine but yeah i mean that's out of scope for this video i'll definitely put down some of the papers for positional encodings in the description make sure to check them out so yeah i mean if you enjoyed this content make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel do share it across the friends to whosoever you think is interested in such content. I'll meet you in the next one. Bye-bye and take care.